big security, Simon Michelle, who joins us for a look at the bond markets. Because, Simon, it's been pretty interesting for bond markets over the past week with all these comments coming from the Fed. Stanley Fisher speaking yet again overnight. That's right, Ingrid. Good afternoon. And he's basically pulled back a little bit on uh, his rather bullish comments that uh, led the market <laughs> to react uh, a little over excitedly on the back of. And uh, he said what we all know, and that is that the uh, path in interest rates in the US is down to the strength of the US economy. Surprise, surprise. So, um, look, I think, uh, you know, that excitement we had at the beginning of the week on the back of uh, Janet Yellen's speech uh, has sort of pulled back and we've seen yields pull back uh, as well. It does seem like they are trying to get a message across, though. I mean, maybe a little slap on the wrist for, for going a little too far originally, but, but certainly they are trying to get a message across of, of higher rates, right? That's right. They're certainly preparing the market for that. And, uh, you know, they want, want the market to be aware that they could go. Um, obviously, they've had September uh, mentioned there. That's not looking very likely. I think more likely it is a December. But unfortunately, the data when it comes out just is not matching that... Uh, that commentary really and uh, you know inflation very soft growth very soft that's offset by employment uh, the job market looking good and uh, consumer uh, demand in the US looking pretty good too so yeah we're walking a bit of a double-edged sword at the moment a couple of issuances to look at coca-cola taking advantage of some low rates in in Europe Absolutely. We keep talking about negative yields in Europe. Well, it's, yeah. a, it's a wonderful place to issue at the moment, and Coca-Cola got a 20-year issue away at a, a rate of 1.12%. So very cheap funding for a long period of time. We've seen PepsiCo issue there as well. Uh, and domestically, I'll just mention as well, we had an ASX-listed Aussie company here, Cube, uh, looking to issue as well, a seven-year. Looks like that's been well oversubscribed. So some, uh, some good options here for domestic uh, investors as well. Yeah, interesting. All right. Simon Michelle, appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Ingrid. Simon Michelle there from Fig Securities with the latest on the board. Surprising it uh, ahead of that meeting. Simon Michelle from Fig Securities joining us live. Simon, good afternoon to you. How are bond markets treating tomorrow's RBA meeting with, I guess, payrolls in mind as well? That's right. Good afternoon, Ingrid. Well, uh, those uh, softer payroll numbers we got out of the US uh, last week uh, failed to provide a clear path for US rates. Mm. And so we're back where we started with uh, pretty much a 50-50 even split over a September hike. Uh, the RBA here in Australia, fairly quiet in the lead up. I think, uh, you know, we like to see them sit on the sideline and hope that uh, they will see a US September rate hike. That would certainly take some pressure off the Aussie dollar. <laughs> i tell you what, a cut would get the Aussie dollar going, wouldn't it, tomorrow, given it's not priced in at all? That's exactly right, absolutely. I think, look, you know, I think they'll just sit on the sidelines. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of uh, movement, uh, really, in rates. Um, the dollar's moving up, obviously, as you just mentioned, about 75.91 at the moment. Uh, you know, they really want to see the US move. I think it's more likely looking at a December uh, move at this stage. The futures market's about 30% for September tightening. I know domestic bond issuance has been quite interesting uh, over the past couple of months. Transurban's looking at a potential uh, US dollar issue. What are the details there? Yeah, so they're over in the US doing a bit of a, a road show looking at a potential US dollar issue, uh, which would be great for them. They're an investment grade issuer. And then you've got uh, a Victorian energy, energy Distribution Network, uh, United Energy Distribution, looking at doing a seven-year issue at the moment. Apart from that, pretty quiet. I mean, is it, is it particularly quiet in that domestic issuance market at the moment? How are yields affecting, uh, I guess, the, the, the appetite for that? Look, very, very strong appetite at the moment. Uh, you know, both here and offshore, we've seen a lot of Aussie issuers over in Europe. Uh, one of the uh, regional banks uh, at the moment is over in Europe doing a bit of a roadshow, likely to do a, a euro issue, mm -hmm. taking advantage of those very low rates over there. Now, for an investor, they'd rather invest in the US or Australia, where you actually get positive yields and you get, uh, you know, fairly significant corporate yields around that sort of, you know, four, four and a half percent here in Australia. So, um, you know, that's why we're seeing, uh, you know, strong demand for the Aussie and the Aussie dollar. Great time to issue for corporates. We're seeing a lot of refinancing happening at these low levels. But for an investor, uh, you know, they're keen to lock in these yields at the moment because that view is they're not likely to move up anytime soon. Simon, Tony Davison from Henderson Maxwell here. I'm just interested, uh, we might hear from the BOE and also the ECB a little bit more about the corporate bond buying program in the next week or so. Do you expect or are you guys looking for much adjustment in their program and a bit more visibility as to what they're looking to target? Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen the ECB increase their bond buying program and move into corporate bonds as well, and that's had a really big impact on those negative Sorry. yields. So, you know, will there be an adjustment to that? Will they look at expanding that uh, purchase program? I think over the Bank of England, uh, you know, obviously on the back of Brexit, and, uh, you know, they want to, to see a little bit more clarification of the, some of the support measures that we're likely to see from the, the Bank of England, mm. uh, you know, because we haven't really, you know, it's, it's taken them a, a bit of time to get to this point um, of providing that clarity. We did think we'd 
see some action uh, a little earlier, mm. uh, about a month ago, that didn't come through. So there has been a bit of a sort of wait on the sidelines to see how the new um, government in uh, England will, uh, you know, provide that support to their markets as well. All right, Simon, we'll leave it there with you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Simon Michelle there from Fig Securities. And that does it wrap up.